step into him. I want you when you leave here tonight, I want you to literally see yourself in Yeshua. I want, to, I want you to see yourself clothed in him. Like you literally put him on as a, as, a, as a wetsuit, as a suit, as a clothing piece. That he's over you and, and you're in him. Father, tonight I pray in Christ, I ask that everyone in this room will go a level deeper in relationship to you. That we will be shifting into a new place of loving you, a new revelation, a new understanding of how to love you more, Lord. A, a dimensional shift to take place in our thinking of intimacy with you. Where our natural perception is sexual and, and hugs and kisses. Where your intimacy dimension is completely different. It's literally physically becoming one and we can't perceive that in, in the natural Lord. The Father, I just pray that you will begin to open up the hearts of your people, the spirit man. To soak on you and eat of you and drink of you. To begin to understand the dimension of intimacy that you long for with your people. To go back in. In. I want you to reach into him. I want you to reach into him tonight. Reach into him like Thomas did. Put your hand into his side. But not just your hand. Put your whole being into him. Climb into him. And then you know what? When you come out, take everything you need for your life today. Take it with you as you come out of him. But then remind yourself that you go back into him. Like it's an in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out, all day, every day, all of your life and for eternity. That that is my new place of residence. That I love and move and I have my being in Him and I live in Him. And He lives in the Father. It, it is this, I live in Him and He lives in me and we all live in each other. It's a very cozy place. But it starts with, with the bride being one. And the bride becomes one in the Holy Spirit. And then when the bride is in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit takes us into Christ and Christ takes us into the Father and then we're in Yahweh 
That's where revelation and understanding, that's the nine skins we were talking about the other day. Where we step into that dimension and we begin to understand that your Father is pouring into a generation of people that is ready to take a nation for Christ and beyond. Shift everything back into place according to the image. If I have to repeat what I just said, I really believe the Father is literally saying that I have called you to stand as a a warrior in front yes. not just in the front like what we perceive because what we see a warrior to be and I said this last night this is not a fight that will be a fight of war with weapons and swords and bombs and knives and guns this will be a war, a war of worship because the forerunners like Ryan and Jennifer was talking about on Sunday, those are the men, the sons and the daughters that will step out in worship and intimacy, that will war in their love for Yahweh with that which is not in His image. And because of the glory and the fire and the holiness and the purity that we will walk in will bring a dimension of His image to the earth that wherever we put with our feet, the enemy will get so confused that they will stop warring against each other. Just like in David's day. I literally see the fathers taking uh, individuals in this room, picking them up, taking them into the kingdom of heaven and placing them in the classroom because they are ready. Some of you are sitting here tonight and most of what I say might go right over you, but you know what? Your spirit man is ready. Your spirit man is saying, take me in so I can relate this to my soul the way I understand best. And Father, I want to pray and ask you in the name of Yeshua that tonight that you will just pour into every son, every daughter, Father. I know you love your people and I know that there's dimensions that you're opening for us and there's revelations and there's an understanding that you want for us and I know that it's, it's tonight we're going into that place with you. The thank you making that we can love you and praise you and glorify you and trust that you will propel us into that which we need for this season. In the name of Yeshua. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. I really don't want to come back. Thank you that we're shifting, my king. Are we shifting? Beginning to see, beginning to understand. And what we used to know wasn't wrong, but it's changing. It's revelational. It's changing daily. And the old and the way we used to think, the way we perceived things, the way we understood things, the way we expected things to happen, it's just not happening that way anymore. You've changed it. You've changed it for our benefit. You know, they used to, the way I used to speak to, to my oldest son when he was a baby, I don't speak to him anymore. Do you guys understand that? If I go to my 10-year-old son and I go, <laughs> Joriki, my little boy, my cutie pie, come here, what you doing? He's going to go, Dad, don't be ridiculous. Right? 
that we have to expect God to change towards us as we grow. But because we have learned that the, all that our God does is speak to us, we can only hear His voice in one way. How many of you are getting to understand that we serve a God that wants us to see Him, walk with Him, touch Him, smell Him, feel Him? A God that's revealing Himself to His sons and His daughters. Not the religious. The Pharisees was too far away from Him to see. The Sadducees were sad because they saw the Pharisees was too far away and couldn't see and they couldn't see. Like they weren't born again. It's a sad thing if you can't see. Are you guys okay? Are you, are you as drunk as what I am? Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm just talking funny stuff. <laughs> what, I'm, what I'm trying to do tonight <laughs> is um, <laughs> we're trying to go a little bit further from the dividing soul of spirit. So um, I, I, I never really do it all at the same time. I kind of throw a little bit out there. So we did dividing soul and spirit, but there's three other parts to dividing soul and spirit. We've got the bone and the marrow, and we've got the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Okay, so it's a three-part series, but I don't want to throw everything at you at the same time because uh, dividing soul and spirit, then there's some other things that you need to begin to understand before we can get to the bone and the marrow. But even before we go to the bone and the marrow, we need to have an understanding of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. And in between that, there's some other things and teachings that we kind of need to have a revelation of. So tonight we're going to do the thoughts and intents of the heart. And it's really important for you to, to begin to understand slowly but surely that you're not going to immediately divide soul and spirit. Um, and it might, it might just take you three weeks. It might be two weeks. It might be two months. It might be nine months. Like for me, it might be two years. It depends on your revelation. It depends on your understanding. It depends on where you at and how desperately you desire to go deeper and deeper into the things of God. Because your soul will always block you from revelation. Your soul will always stop you from knowing and going deeper. For the Word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword. Which means there's no two-edged sword on the planet that's sharper than the Word. <laughs> okay? Which actually tells you that the sword is a sword of the Spirit, not a sword of the flesh. That's just logic. Okay, so this is a sword that does not exist in our natural perception. So this dimension of understanding and revelation cannot be perceived in the natural because the sword is not a natural sword it's a supernatural sword that is it is created and developed through your revelation of who Christ is and that's just it's logic right Amen. and piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit and both joints and marrow and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. The Bible goes as far, and I would first have to just remind you, and we've taught on this before, um, that, that, that the soul is in charge. It was in charge for a very, very long time. In my life, it was in charge for 19 years. But in the same breath, there's a bloodline in my generation that goes down many years. Which means my, my parents and their parents and their parents were born soulish and stayed soulish. They were religious and stayed religious. Never really got to the place where they had full access to a born again understanding and revelation of who they could be, would be and should be. So it's not just my 19 years that I have to get rid of. It is a bloodline generational thing that needs to be broken over me, but it's not something that I can cut off in the name of Jesus like we think we can. Because that I can cut that off, but it's still my decision on how to think it. I still have to choose what I'm thinking. I still have to choose what I believe. I still have to meditate on what I know my heart needs. Although it's a bloodline thing that is broken, Kind of funny. <laughs> I'm sorry. It, it's just really, really sweet. I love you guys very much. Now, what I'm trying to say is that because my soul and my heart and my spirit was one, and it should not be one, and I divided it through the word, my heart still has my soul's intentions, 
My heart still has this world's revelations and understanding. So it's a, a piece of my spirit that has to break away from the earth and the worldly things. Because all my spirit knows is what my soul taught it while it was one. Yeah. Right? Yes, it has a remembrance of things in the spirit and the things that I agreed to as spirit being before I came into my mother's womb. Yeah. But I have to go back into that realm to be reminded of what that was. Because I have amnesia. That's not a cocktail. That's when you forget stuff. <laughs> the Bible goes as far as to say, the heart is deceitful above all things. So out of everything there is, the heart is the most deceitful. <laughs> it's desperately wicked. Who can know it? Now I have to remind you that my heart is my spirit. <coughs> and the Bible says, as a man thinks in his heart, so he is. So if my spirit is that wicked, I remind you why it's wicked. It's not wicked because of what it originally is. It's wicked because of the decision that we made as a humankind. Eating of the fruit. If you eat of the fruit, you will die. So they eat of the fruit, they did not die, but something had to shift. Instead of the spirit man being in charge, the spirit man went back on the inside and the flesh came on the outside. And we got skinned. So now it's a whole different being. It's not even the same creation anymore. So that creation, the second creation, is a completely different uh, nation, a creation. It's not the same as the original intent was. So that creation where we were at before we got born again, this two-strand DNA creation, the 23 chromosomes of your mom and 23 chromosomes of your father, has to go through process of getting back to the original state. And in that process, I have to eliminate the evil that I'm born into and that shaped me. And so the understanding that we need to have here is that my spirit, when it gets born again, it immediately, it's saved. It has a new way of thinking, it has a new perception, it has a new way of understanding, but... Now, I was a personal trainer for many years, there's always a but. It's either too big, or it's too small. Or it needs more muscle, or something needs to happen, but there's always a but. And the but in this situation is this. I have to retrain, re-equip my spirit because my soul will pour into my spirit and would want to reattach all the time. If I step into the flesh for a second in my day, my soul would want to attach back to my, to my spirit to draw life from it. And then my spirit immediately has to go through a process of breaking free again. And when I'm in the flesh, I remind you that then Satan comes to kill, steal and destroy and the word, the word devil, now I, I'm not sure if it's devil, but I don't have my notes with me, but there's certain names uh, of the devil, there's 17 specific names that I have taught on before, and, and one of them literally means that he lies in wait. Yeah. He lies in wait until he breaks through. So it's not just that he lies in wait, he doesn't stop. He literally lies in wait until you get into the flesh. Once you're in the flesh, he grabs hold and he doesn't stop until he breaks through. Now, of course, that's a perversion of the original because he can't create anything. That's exactly what the father does. He lies in wait. And all he needs is one milli quarter second, if there's ever such a thing, of you believing body, soul, and spirit. And once that's there, he comes in and you have your miracle. Right? I can't, I can't expect a miracle if I'm not in sync with my body, soul, and spirit. So if I believe in my, in my spirit, I'm not going to get the miracle. If I believe only in my soul and my spirit, I'm not going to get the miracle. But if I believe body, soul, and spirit, then all of a sudden there's sync, there's unity, there's no division, and instantly the Father is there because his character is to lie and wait for his sons and his daughters to, to open themselves up so he can come in. It's all he wants to do. All he wants to do is to bring you into the fullness and the fullness is, of course, completely and utterly healed in every part and dimension of your life. So it's the process of getting my spirit, my heart, back to where it needs to be. Bible in Proverbs 23, it says, and I love this scripture, it says, As he thinks in his heart, so he is. So what is it that you want to be? Think of it in your heart, and so it will be. But you have to get yourself via the Holy Spirit, via Christ, via living in the Spirit to that place where you utterly and completely 
believe that your spirit man is in charge. Not just in charge, but you think with your spirit, no longer with your mind. Because if the Father never created my mind to think, what is it doing? Why am I thinking with my brain? Why am I thinking? Even scientifically they've proven that the heart would be a better thinking organism than the brain. I mean, if I have 100% brain capacity and only use 7% of it, do you think that's God? Why would God do that? So that means that it was never meant for man to think with his brain. <laughs> Don't look at me like that. <laughs> so when I start thinking with my spirit, it takes my intelligence to a whole new level. Yeah. It takes everything to a new dimension. That's why it's so important for you in your workplace, at home, everywhere you go, to constantly remind yourself that you're a spiritual born-again Christian. That you don't have to separate your, your life, your work life, with your, your church life, and your house life, with your church life, and all the other places that you go to, and all the other things you do. You don't have to separate it. It's all one life. And it has to be consumed with the life of Christ has to be consumed by you living in the spirit and operating as a spirit being. Because as soon as I, and I say this, and I need to hammer you on this, because as soon as I step out of the spirit, first of all, I'm under the sun and the moon, time and space takes over, so I start dying again. Whereas in the spirit, life is increased and continually added to me, which means the more I stay in the spirit, the longer I live. And of course, the enemy lies and waits for me to step into the flesh so he can kill, sin, and destroy. He has Beelzebub, Lord of Flies, the only part of you that can become rotten is your flesh, so he can lord over you as a fly over dung. Hmm, interesting. And so it's my responsibility to via the Word of God. And again, because I've, I have already taught you on the Word, the three-dimensional Word, which is very important, you can't just have the written, but you can't just have the spoken, and you cannot just have Yeshua. It has to be the combination of the three because it's put there for specific reasons. And that is to give you the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Because that's what sets you free. But that word that is the truth that sets you free, it has to be in an intimate relationship with a true living God. That's why the revelation of His blood and what His blood does is so important because that gives me the fullness and understanding regarding the blood because it, uh, regarding the word. Because it's that word that forms a sword that I can divide soul and spirit with. That I can begin to walk in that dimension where my spirit man is free and I can see. Now not just to see, but to literally live in my mansion. Because death is not my savior, so I do not have to wait until I die to live in a mansion. In heaven, that Jesus, Yeshua, has already prepared for me. And by the way, it's in the heart of God. The way our heart thinks will determine how we live and how we are. So if my heart is consumed with the glory, it literally reflects the glory onto my soul and my body. And because the idea the Father has always had with the restoration through the blood is that my spirit walks in the kingdom of heaven and have the light reflect in and through it so that when it returns in the morning, because the morning is the day and the day is the morning, so when I go to sleep I go... My day begins, because that's when my spirit goes into the kingdom of heaven, and my body takes a rest. And then in the kingdom of heaven, I get that image reflected in and through me, the light, the pure light, the light of Yeshua, the light of Yahweh reflects in my spirit. All the things that happen in that time as I engage with the seven spirits, as I walk with the things of Yahweh, as I engage with all of that kingdom. And when I wake up in the morning, that image is reflected back into my soul and my body. And the idea is that that image reflects a changed way of thinking, a changed way of understanding, a new knowledge, a new revelation of who I am as a spirit being walking the earth. Because remember, the second Adam is not what Jesus did before he died. The second Adam and the fullness of the second Adam is what Yeshua did after he resurrected. Wow. It's not the same. It's not even the same creation. That's why you had to die, because once you put something in the ground, it grows. If I take an apple seed, the apple seed does not look like an apple. Do you understand that? Yeah. I, mean, just, you know, I look at an apple seed and I can't even begin to imagine that that weird looking little thing is going to become an apple. 
So Jesus did phenomenal things as, as Jesus Christ. But then he had to die, go to the ground. And then what came out of there, it does not look the same. It's a whole new creation. It's a whole, and that is that which the Father has given me. Although I'll do all that he did on the earth because he was my example, but the 33 years of his ministry, the 40 years of his life, or the 40, 33, 34 years of his life was, was what I can have if I believe only that. But if I go further and realize that I'm part of a new creation, like he said through Paul, that the old man has died and new has come, then I can have all that he had in those 40 days on the earth. Amen. Are you guys okay? Yes. I'm trying not to go deep, or too deep, but uh, I don't know what's happening. You guys are sucking something out of me. <laughs> we cannot content to allow our nature the record of our past generations to program our hearts nor uh, nurture the events which have gone on around us and shaped our history nor trauma the things which have happened to us and conditioned us to respond in particular ways because I'm a new creation the old creation has no longer no rule over me right. but you must remind yourself that I'm speaking as if it's already been. It's already happening. It's the way it's supposed to be. Because I can't tell you where you're at. Because you know where you're at. So if I tell you where you're at the whole time, do you think you're going to move forward? Of course not. And that's what the church has been doing for the last 400 years. It told you where you're at. You're a pathetic loser. You're a sinner. You're never going to be right. You're never going to be holy. You're always going to make mistakes. You're always going to do this. I can't do that. But that makes no sense to me. I'll tell you where you're supposed to be, and then you have a goal to go to. Okay, Jesus was my first goal, but I have more than one goal. And even in my destiny scroll, I got my destiny scroll and I, I started doing exactly, and I literally don't step out of it anymore. Uh, I, I used to go to a certain place to minister, and I said to the guy, I'll go once a month, and uh, the father said to me one day, he said, is that on your plate, my son? And I said, no, it's not on my plate, Lord. He said, so why do you want to eat food that's not on your plate? And he wasn't angry, he said, you can if you want to, because I love preaching. That's what I do. That's who I am. I, I can't help myself. If I don't preach, I have a twitch. <laughs> if I don't preach to you, I preach to my kids or to my wife or to myself in the mirror, which apparently, apparently scientifically men look at the mirror more often than women. Yeah. And, and that's true. And I, I only love myself so I can love you more. <laughs> but, but the idea is that I step into a dimension of revelation that goes beyond just that which I've had. Because what Jesus had, I can have. But His glorified state goes into a whole new creation, a whole new revelation, a whole new dimension, and His desire for me is to step into that place as a son of God. Because we can believe what they taught us. I, mean, I can believe everything Jesus did. I, I, I have a little bit of a twitch when it comes to Lazarus after four days raising him from the dead. I mean, that's a little bit pushing it for me. Okay, well, it starts off right in the beginning when he was born out of a virgin. That's just ridiculous. I mean, really, seriously, let's think about that now. But then that happened, so we have to historically go back and think, okay, well, sure, okay, that, that happened. But that, that's my natural perception. My, my soulish dimension doesn't get that. Then he's born, and then he disappears for 30 years. We only hear a little bit here, a little bit there. We, we were taught that he was a carpenter and then we realized he wasn't because at that age, in that city, all little kids go to become rabbis. That's what they do. And he was the one that succeeded right away, all the way. That's why we never hear from him between 12 and 30. Then he comes back and walks onto the ocean and tells some guy that's a fisherman, that's his business, hey, follow me. Okay, I'll follow you. And we can't understand why on earth would he do that. But now it's starting to become more clear because he was a rabbi. And every other little kid wanted to be a rabbi, but they didn't make it. Right? right. And so that's understandable. You can perceive that. Then he goes and he dies on the cross. And we know death. So that's okay. The fact that he took all my sins on him, that's a little bit dodgy. I don't get that. 
My soul doesn't really perceive that. Where does he do that? How does he do that? Because spiritually I can see it now, but in the natural, if someone takes upon himself my sin, I don't understand that, right? And then he goes and he resurrects himself on the third day. Now he's no longer dead. But not just that, now he's glorified and no longer the same. Now he's not Jesus Christ, now he's Christ Jesus the Lord. So now he's God, fully clothed in his deity, walking the earth. Now he blows my mind. Now my, my soul is freaked out. <coughs> but, and, I, and I want to understand Christianity. I want to understand stuff the Father wants us to go into in my mind. I want, I want to think with this thing. This thing, I, I love it. That's why I shave it, so people can see it. <laughs> <laughs> but this thing doesn't understand it. This is my battleground. This is where all the war takes place. And I, and I thought to myself, this just appeared out of the blue. I'm joking, it didn't. I was in a car accident. But I'm thinking, that must be, oh, that's because it's the battleground. That's where this scar comes from. And it went a little bit further down, but there's a huge scar there. And I was in a nightclub one day, and this lady hit me with a bottle over the head, so I've got a scar over there. So this is proof that it's my battleground. Right, but everything happens in you. Because this is where I think. So stupid me should stop thinking, yeah. If I stop thinking, yeah, then I would stop allowing the enemy to play games with me. Because he can now play all he wants, but I can't hear him yet because he's a flesh devil. And my, my, my soul is still part of my flesh because my, my flesh is attached to my soul. My flesh is the... the um, <clears throat> Slave to my soul. Yeah. So whatever I see in here, it's only things that I have done, only things that I desire to do in the flesh and in the natural. But when I start thinking with the spirit, I will always think and focus on the things above, the heavenly things. Yeah. The things that have an eternal value. Why? Because my spirit comes out of the kingdom of heaven and that's all it can reflect. That's why as a man thinks in his spirit, that's how and who he is. But as a man thinks in his mind where there's battle going on all day and the enemy wins how many of those battles? Well, it depends on you, of course, but our, our desire for sin is so enlarged. Why? Because sin is nice. If it's not nice, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> so I'm stepping, the idea is that I step out of my soul, out of my flesh, and live in my spirit so that my spirit man can do the thinking. Because the thinking that takes place when my spirit's thinking is a whole new ball game. It thinks of, of, of revelation and insight. It thinks of walking and being in the Father. It can't not be separated from Him because it comes out of Him. My spirit, and that's who I am, lives in Him, moves in Him, has His whole being there. I mean, before I got born again, I left this earth without a spirit, so I was soul and body, and I functioned pretty normal. So I can still function pretty normal, but my spirit now awake, alive, born again, living in the kingdom of heaven, in its mansion, receiving the image and the reflection of the light, living in that light, bringing that light back into my soul and into my body. That's how I changed the, 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 the thoughts and intents of my heart, so that the scripture can be switched. And say that the heart is the most pure above all things. And desperately pure. Because you see, it's my spirit in Christ that's ruling on the inside of me. That's the kingdom of heaven. Because Yeshua, the Christ that we love and serve, has to take over the kingdom of heaven in the inside of me first. I have to give him everything. All. He has to, I have to walk with him in Yah. I have to be intimate with him in here. I have to take him into my garden, like he takes me in his garden. I have to take him into every area, every dimension of this being, so that I can get to know him like that. And then he will start shifting me into him, where I get to walk with him. I get to know him. I get to spend time with him, <coughs> where he becomes more than just my Lord, but he literally runs over all of me. Not because he wants to rule me, but because he wants me to give it all to him so he can do what's best for me. That's right. Because he knows me better than I can ever know myself because he's my creator. Amen. Right? right? Amen. Right. Right. Good. Good. <clears throat> 
For the mouth speaks out of that which fills the heart. But can you imagine if your heart's full of glory? Can you begin to imagine? I, I want to use imagination on purpose because we have to begin to realize the importance of imagination. What I think, what I imagine, what I perceive, what I desire is what would eventually happen if my thoughts and my desires and my imaginations comes from my spirit and not my brain, my, my, my place of war. Because a place of war is frustrated, irritated, angry. Am I right? I can step into my soul and into my, and into my spirit like this. i give you an example. It's embarrassing, but it's how I roll. I, uh, I'm on my way to a meeting, and I got a new phone, and the battery's flat, and I don't know how the GPS is working, and I am really, 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 really pathetic when it comes to going to places without GPS. My wife is my GPS, and when I have to go somewhere alone, if I don't use the GPS, I get lost. And if the GPS says these famous words that I vomit on, can I say that? You have reached your destination, and you're in the middle of the woods, Okay, but now I'm not in the middle of the woods. I know exactly where I'm going according to my GPS on, on Thursday or on, on, on Tuesday. Um, I'm going to have lunch with a friend of mine and um, my phone dies. Halfway there, so I have no idea where I am. Can't phone him, can't phone my wife. And I'm plugging it into my phone and, it, and into the car charger and it's not charging. It's not the, 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 the I don't know, something. It just stays on, stays on force. So it powers on and as soon as I phone it goes dead. Powers on as soon as I put the GPS on, it dies. I was in my soul. In the flesh. My, oh Jesus. Woo! I, I stepped out of the spirit and had a lot of fun in the flesh. <laughs> interesting. Very, very interesting. Very, very interesting. I was like, wow. Can I still say stuff like that? Jeez. Wow. And then when I got there, I immediately could step back into the spirit. Now please, I'm not boasting about this. It's a bad thing. But that's how we, we work it. We're in and out, in and out, in and out. The idea is to go in and out so fast that it looks like you're in all the time. The idea is that you're in and out so fast that the enemy doesn't know when you're in or out. Because I have to live in this world and in that world all at the same time. I can go in and out so fast that my body, soul and spirit is in the kingdom of heaven. Because remind yourself that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's not that I have to go somewhere, it's that I have to shift somewhere. And if I can go in and out fast enough daily, all the time, that's when I create the hologram that I'm supposed to live in. That's when this is not real, but it is real. When the kingdom of heaven becomes real, but it's not real, that everything that I see before me can either be real or not real. Like Paul said, um, whether this was in the spirit or not, whether I actually went or didn't, whether it was just a vision or whether it was, I don't know what it was, because it was so real to me, but yet it could, could have been just a vision, but it, I don't know what it was. Because it was in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out, so much so that all these kingdoms, all these realms, all these dimensions become so there for me at any time that I need to begin to perceive where I'm at. I can choose to stay in that place, but for the last couple of years, 10, 12 years, me and my wife have had a rule in the house. If you want to be angry, you have five minutes. If you want to, if you want to be depressed, you've got five minutes. Whatever you need. You have five minutes. Once your five minutes is up, it's over. You want to have unbelief? Five minutes. You want to have no faith? Five minutes. That's it. So I was trained. So by the time I stepped into the, into the soul on Tuesday, by the time I got to the restaurant, which, by the way, according to his text, was the wrong one. That's why I freaked out in the car because now I can't get to the one where I thought I was going, but it's not that one. But then I went to the one that I thought it would be. And it was that one, but he put the different name on there. So if I went according to the GPS, I wouldn't have gotten there. Wow. Anyway, but when I got there, I was back in the spirit. Yeah. Because the Father has trained me. Before I had my sons, or my children, I would sit and I would soak and I would go into the kingdom of heaven and I would have a great time with him and there would not be nobody to bother me. Right? Yeah. Then I have my first child and I'm in the spirit and I'm having a great time, and then I, dad, dad, I'm like, what? And then I close my eyes, and I'm like, dad, dad, what? 
So I'm in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. And I've got four kids. Uh, that's why I wake up at five o'clock when everyone's sleeping. But otherwise, there's no way. But over the last 10 years, I have been trained and equipped to go in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out, in the spirit, in the spirit, in the flesh, in the spirit, in the flesh. There's nothing wrong being in the flesh. Don't misunderstand me. In the flesh, I have all authority over the enemy. In the spirit, the enemy is not there because the flesh devil. So I have to begin to understand my dimension of authority. Because when I, like Paul says, although I live in the flesh, I do not war in the flesh. Right? So although I war, I live in the flesh, this is a fleshly realm. I don't war in this realm. I don't have to live in this realm. I don't have to give note to this realm. But when I am in this realm, I have authority over it. I have dominion over it. And Satan has no right to anything I do in this realm, unless I give him right. Okay. We are called to, to be speaking spirits. We are called to be speaking spirits. Right? Because I'm a spirit being. You know, I'm a spirit being and everything I do has to be spirit. Spirit first. That's why out of the three kingdoms, I have to start with number three first. Out of all the word, the three dimensional part of the word, I have to start with the living first. Right? right. So, and, and body, soul and spirit, I live in a body, I have a soul and I am a spirit. But I have to be in the spirit first. Because that's where I originally come from. So everything that was first has to be first again. That's why the Bible says, as the day in the days of Noah. So it will be at the end. Because the beginning has to be the end. That's why Yeshua through his blood restored us back into the yeah. beginning. Yeah. Okay, we are called to be speaking spirits, to have authority, to call things into being. So that it is, it is really important that our hearts are pure and that what comes out of our hearts is a flow of the life of God. That is Zoe. The Zoe life of Yahweh it is a like God life. The idea of living in the spirit and being spirit being is that I live a life filled with the life of God. That's where if you read Isaiah 11, it talks very clearly about what the seven spirits do for one that's already gone through the process of walking with them. You do not judge with the sight of your eyes, nor with the hearing of your ears, but in the spirit. You have great authority, right? You have dimensions of righteousness. You have an understanding of the truth. Why? Because you've walked with him. He's aligned you as a king in the kingdom, and so you think like a king. Think like a king. Amen. That's the idea. <coughs> Watch over your heart with all diligence. From it flows the spring of life. Now see how it changes. In the beginning it tells us that your heart is the most evil thing. And now it's telling us that from your heart um, flow springs of life. Why? Because there was a change in my heart. Right? I got born again. So the change in my heart brings me back to the original point of who my spirit man's always been. In the image of Yahweh. So that I can look like him, walk like him, act like him, smell like him, talk like him. Be like him in all and every manner and way. Right? Are you guys okay? You follow me? So the idea is that I bring my heart, my spirit back to its intended place. And I can't do that through studying the Word. Because let me tell you something, the Word is to change my soul. The, the Word, the Logos, is to change my soul. It's the living Word that's for my spirit. So if my spirit's first, the living Word's first, then those who have to engage first. Right? So that my spirit man can grow in Yahweh, in Yeshua, and it can start relating another dimension of the word, because that will be the spoken word, because the living word spoke to me and gave me the living word, so that my soul through engagement with my spirit, which in Christ, can begin to understand the written word that holds everything together for him. Because it's the lit written word which is the belt of truth that holds everything together. But everything outside of the word is problematic. 
because my soul only perceives that which it can see. So it can't see anything. I can't see Jesus. Can't see the kingdom of heaven. Not yet. Because it's going through the process of learning. The process of salvation. Right? right. And the process of salvation is up to you how long it takes. There's no time frame. Your process of salvation can happen immediately. That's why I believe that the next generation that we are meant to bring into the promised land will be a people that get these teachings at the day of their new birth. Yeah. And it immediately starts running in and through them. Yeah. Because if I had this 21 years ago when I got born again, I would have been 21 years old. But today, after being saved for 21 years, I'm only five years into this stuff. Right. And it's still, what does a five-year-old do? Still wets his bed. He can't write yet. He speaks, but he doesn't speak all that well. He thinks, but he doesn't think like a grown-up. He thinks like a five-year-old. Right. So he's still in the process of learning. So I might sound really educated, and I might sound really good in these teachings. It might sound phenomenal. And I, know, I know, I know, I know. But, but I'm only five years old. So in essence, I'm just a little kid trying to explain to you guys what I know. Can you imagine a five-year-old trying to tell you something that he knows? You're like, okay. It's like, okay. Is that is that a, a teddy bear you drew there? Are you sure? Are you sure it's a teddy bear? It just looks like a struggle. Wow, great imagination then, I guess. So please understand that, that we have to act according to where we act. Because the Father is not going to give you what you desire if you're not where he wants you to be. So I might desire certain things today, but I'm not there yet. So he can't give me what I desire. He can only give me up to where I'm at. For example, and I, I keep going back to my children, but my, my kids uh, used to get um, a dollar for every poo nappy, a poo diaper. A diaper that one of the babies made. They have to go throw it in the dustbin. They get a dollar for it. Uh, wee nappy, the so number one is a wee nappy. Number two is a poo nappy. Uh, the poo nappy is one dollar, and the pee nappy is fifty cents. So they could get a, they could get a good good salary at the end of the week, which will add up to about maybe maybe five dollars a week each if they were there to take the diapers. Otherwise, I would do it. But. When they're a little bit older, I mean, you know, $5 is not going to do it anymore. Now, the one is 10 and the other one's 9, they don't touch the poo nappies anymore. Now, the 18 month old, no one can throw his poo diapers away except him. And if you touch them, he'll scream. But as we grow, we need new things. As we grow, what we used to have is not good enough. Because we're growing out of it. So where are you at? I'm, I'm in it for five years. And it's up to me how, how quick I grow. It's up to me how I persevere and how I push into what I desire. Because all the stuff is coming into my spirit and it's my responsibility to either wake up at eight, go to work at nine and do my day, or wake up at three or four or five, spend that time with the Lord before I go to work, and then spend some more time with Him at lunch break, spend some time with Him in between work and while I'm busy working, and, and it's my responsibility to engage this as much as I possibly can, or I can just do it in the morning a little bit, and then maybe at lunch time, and forget about all the stuff during the time of working. It's my decision. But how many of you understand that you also get retarded kids? You also get unhealthy kids that doesn't take in the right amount of nutrition. Or that comes from parents that was either abusing alcohol or drugs. Then they're not normal and there's something physically wrong with them. I wasn't talking about myself, by the way. But do you begin to understand that everyone's not at the same level? Now you might be spiritually retarded, and that sounds really bad, but it's a medical term. It's also an insult if you don't like someone, <laughs> but it's a medical term. But we can be spiritually retarded as well, where we just, we never had the right teaching. And let me just tell you, I was spiritually retarded. By the time I met my spiritual father, he thought there was something seriously wrong with me because I was a pastor. And he just looked at me and said, dude, you're not called to be a pastor. Why are you a pastor? 
I'm like, that's all I knew. It's all I know. It's all I ever wanted to be. There's nothing maternal about me. <laughs> At all. I think. But paternal, yes. Because I'm a father. And that's not the same office. Those two don't go together. Yeah. You understand? A father can't mother. Yeah. A mother can't father. But of course, in, in dimensions, they can. Yeah. But for me, I needed to shift out of that place. Yeah. So I was, I was retarded in many ways. I couldn't understand why I was fighting as a pastor. I had such great passion for God. I did all these things. I thought that was how it's supposed to be. And then I realized, well, that's not who I'm supposed to be. Then I had to change my way of thinking, change everything, change the church, change the people's understanding of what we're doing. Begin to father them instead of mothering them. Get someone in to mother them so they can have both. That's right. And then grow it from there. That's right. So we need to understand where we at. And I don't know where you at. But I love you enough, but I don't care. I don't care where you at. I know where I want you to be. And if you're not there tomorrow, I'm going to try and slap you until you get there. I'm trying to push you and propel you because that's what's happening to me. I can't be happy today because of where I was tomorrow or yesterday. I don't like where I was yesterday because today I might not even believe the same things I believed yesterday because I'm growing. I have to grow. It's my responsibility. No one can make me grow. Are you guys okay? Tree of life. Hope deferred makes the heart sink, but desire fulfilled is the tree of life. To the Father, through His blood, has made it available for us again to eat of the fruit of life, the tree of life. And we forget that the tree of life was always available to eat from for Adam and Eve before anything happened. It was the tree of good and evil that they couldn't eat of. Right? right. But because of sin, they couldn't come in and eat of anything. So they died daily, and all that they could have was death. Right? right. Yeah. But yet, Noah still lived until he was 950. Yeah. But now, because of Yeshua, because of the blood, we again have access back into Eden, where we can eat the tree of life. It's the fullness of life. That's why he says that if you live in the Spirit, you will not die. Because there's no death in the spirit and that relates to my soul and to my body. And I will eventually begin to believe it. But the idea the Father has here is that I have to get the desires of the Father in my spirit so it can reflect into my soul and into my body. Because those desires are what leads me into the fullness of what is destined for me. Because we have not fulfilled our eternal destiny. We have not. We have not even known, known that we have an eternal destiny. Most of us focus on our destiny on the earth. Let me tell you, you do not have a destiny on the earth. It's the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. The earth is not my destiny. This is the cradle of mankind. A baby that stays in a cradle will die. Or eventually the cradle will break and he will fall and get badly hurt. Or he's retarded and there's something wrong with him. A baby does not stay in a cradle. A baby grows out of a cradle. And if this world is a cradle of mankind, we have to grow out of it. Right? So my destiny is eternal. My purpose is something completely different. So I can have an earthly purpose, but I have an eternal destiny. So while I'm on the earth, I have destiny. There's a certain role and a path that I have to take because I agreed to a certain destiny when I left the kingdom of heaven to enter my mother's womb. That's right. And that is the destiny. That's why it's called the destiny scroll, that I can go to the court of scrolls to get it. But I have to know the courts. I have to know the kingdom of heaven before I can start going into it. That's why it becomes your responsibility to soak yourself into these places. That's why you couldn't have done it because you've never heard of it. But now that you're hearing of it, and it's not just me preaching it, there's hundreds of other people preaching it. Yeah. It's different levels. Yeah. Different levels of this stuff. Yeah. So it's your responsibility to go search for it and listen to it over and over and over and over and over and over again. And over and over and over and over again. And over and over and over again. And over and over again. And over and over again. And over again. 
<laughs> right? God wants to restore and heal it. He wants to take me to that place where I'm fully restored. Fully restored back into His image. And I have to propel myself into that. Instead, let us draw from the tree of life. As it says in the second half of this verse, the tree of life is in the garden of God and always has been and was and can be accessed today if our hearts are right. My heart's only right and I remind you of this because of the blood of Jesus. Because I got born again. Because the born again creation is different from any other creation. It's like the, 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 the second Adam after his resurrection. Glorified. I'm going to read the scripture again, Hebrews 4.12. For the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword and piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit um, of both joints and marrow <coughs> and able to judge the thoughts and intents of the heart. Our heart has thoughts and intentions. We need to be aware of what our motivation is. Let me tell you something. If you think something is wrong or you think something is right, Immediately go to your motivation. Yeah. Because to the pure, all things are pure. Yeah. But what's your motivation for wanting to do it? That's because that's where the problem comes in. That's right. That's right. Because having money is not a problem. What's your motivation for having money? Yeah. That's right. Tattoos, it's not a problem. But what's your motivation for having a tattoo? Right. Because when Yeshua said to, or when, when, Jesus, when, when Yahweh said to the Israelites, do not tattoo your bodies like the heathens do, he didn't say don't tattoo your bodies. He said, don't tattoo their bodies like the heathens do. Right. Motivation. Why are you doing it? Why are you doing what you're doing? Why is your hair brushed like that? Why are you wearing the clothes you're wearing? Yeah. Why is your pants so tight? Right. Why is your shirt so tight? That's right. That's right. And I remind you, now we're not doing it yet, but some of these things we're doing is called trading. Demonic trading. Spending a half an hour on a tithe and offering message. Or an hour on a tithe and offering message. Yeah. To manipulate the one's giving. Yeah. It's trading. The one's giving even after that message is trading on a demonic trading floor. That's why the wisdom that we get from the spirit realm needs to be reflected into my soul and into my body. <coughs> Although the Father wants us to give, He wants us to give with the right motivation. That's why it says, don't give what you say, but they say you must give. Give according to what you've decided in your heart. That's right. My spirit knows all things. Amen. It doesn't make a mistake. It makes a mistake when it's attached to my soul. Amen. And my soul listens to the manipulation of man. I says, I will put my law within them, and on their hearts I will write it. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. The law here yeah, is not the Ten Commandments, but the laws which are the principles of the kingdom, the kingdom of Yahweh, the kingdom of heaven. There's a, another kingdom that we need to step into. This is the kingdom of heaven. We call, we call it the third heaven, and I've discussed this with you already. But we have to begin to see how that, that, that kingdom works. Now there's 12 laws, and there will be a time that I'm going to teach on all of these things. Not now. The 12 laws says the law of the spirit of life. The law of sin and death, the law of faith, the law of love, the law of first mention, the law of sowing and reaping, the law of the firstborn, the law of justice, the law of abundance, the law of righteousness, the law of justice, the law of grace. I have to begin to understand these 12 laws. Now, of course, it's revelation on each dimension of it. That's why each one of these laws will be a message ministered and a revelation you need to get. But it becomes your responsibility to start going into the Word of God, not man directing. If you notice, only a little bit of the scripture I've read, I'll tell you where it is. But I don't want to tell you where it is because I can't feed you with a spoon. Come on. I am over that. Yes. Even my 18-month-old don't get fed anymore. He makes a big fat mess and I want to slap him in the back of his head. But I, don't, I refuse to feed him anymore. Because he has to learn how to do it himself. Now my three-year-old, she does it perfectly. My, my nine-year-old, he's now started to cut with a knife. And he's doing a great job. My ten-year-old, he's just rolling in it. 
He has everything in sight. That's why I move very slowly when I'm near him. <coughs> but I don't want to feed you with a spoon. I need you to start cutting your own meat. I need you to start eating your own food. I need you to find everything on your plate and eat all of it. And if you don't eat all the food, you will not leave this table. <laughs> Are you guys still okay? Yeah. We're going to do another five or ten minutes and I'm done, okay? Delight yourself also in the Lord and He will give you the desires and secret petitions of your heart. So my spirit, my heart has, has secret um, desires and petitions that the Lord will give me when I delight myself in Him. It's not just going to happen. Because how many of you understand, you really need to desire something. That's why he says in the word, you want to find me? He's like being sarcastic. You want to find me? Bro, you, you want to find me? And that's how you're looking? That's how you're searching? You're never going to find me. You want to find me? You need to look with all of your heart. Because you want to love me? You want to love me? Excuse me, dude. You want to love me? You need to love me with all your heart, mind, body, soul, and strength. Anything less than that, you're just saying you love me. You don't really love me. Right. See, he's that type of God. He wants everything. Because then he knows the desires of your heart. And then he'll start pouring into you the secrets and the intents of what he wants to reveal to you through your spirit man. Yeah. And then you start walking in the fullness of it. Amen. But we say, now please, don't, I'm not knocking what happened here on Sunday. I enjoyed it. It was great. It was phenomenal. But we have this mentality. That if someone calls me forward and prays for me, lay hands on me for something, then I immediately have it. And you walk away and you feel great, but you get home and it's gone. Come on, preach it. No, 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 no. Listen, when someone gives you a mantle, you have to go find it. Because it was a physical manifestation of a spiritual thing that you do not have yet. Do you think after Elijah left, Elijah left, Elisha just got the mantle and immediately with all that. No, he walked all of his life with his spiritual father and was trained and was taught. And then the mantle fell on him. So it's the father that gives the son the mantle. I can't give my mantle to anyone in this room. I can say, well, let's come forward and I can pray uh, whatever over you and you can feel good. But it's not about feeling because if you go home... You don't have anything. Because you have to walk in it. That's why it says, faith without works, it's dead. Faith without works, it's dead. Works. Works. With the person next to you, say works. I have to work at it. That's why it's not for everybody. It is for everybody, but it's not for everybody because everybody doesn't want to work at it. Do you think that if everybody wanted to work at it, that there would be more people here tonight? <coughs> No, I understand. I'm, I'm pretty impressed. This is the biggest school I have. Yeah. Because all the other churches are a quarter of the size. But understand that if we're really searching for Him, then we will make the effort. Then we'll wake up at 5 in the morning. Right. And that's, that, He's not demanding it. He's just saying, bro, if you want this, then search with, it, with all your heart. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me besides quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the path of righteousness for His name's sake. See, the Father's desire for you in this time and in this season is to soak in Him. To go find yourself at that place where He's feeding you or He's leading you to pastures where you can just eat. But remind yourself that you have to be the one eating. He can't feed you. Because it's your father. It's not your mother. Your mother will feed you. But your father will not feed you. The father takes you to green pastures. And you have to eat. If you don't eat, you're going to starve. Because he's not going to feed you. Hmm. He makes you lie down in green pastures. He gives you rest. And his desire for you is to step into him and find that rest. Because it's in that place of rest that I begin to see through my spirit what it's supposed to be so I can go to that place <coughs> where I need to be as a, as a spirit being. 
where my thoughts and my intents and the heart has been purified, has been made right, where my soul and my spirit is divided, where bone and marrow, and the understanding of that scripture becomes alive and it changes who I am. Let's stand up. Father, there's a dimension that I know you want us to step into, Father. I, I can feel it in the spirit tonight as your, your sons and your daughters is dragging all that I have inside of me out, Father. Just wanting more of it. I want it to understand it. I want to have revelation, Father. Wanting to hang on it and do it, Father. And I pray and ask you right now, in the name of Yeshua, that you will start opening up the hearts. But more than just the heart, Father, that you'll begin to take your people deep, deep, deep into that place where your seven spirits will teach and educate. Father, where you, as the Father, as the King, will begin to show us the things of the kingdom so we can be co with you as you have said in your word, Father. The idea and the desire I know of your heart is that your sons and your daughters will look like you and bring that image to the earth so you can return. Father, I pray that everybody in this room will be blessed. Lord, I pray that you will increase our revelation and knowledge and understanding. I ask, Father, that you will begin to show us who we are meant to be. And that we start walking in that fullness. But let us in the same breath understand. Let us understand that it's all it works. I have to work at it because it's not for everybody. There's there's a million millions of Christians out there, but that most are on, on a level that, that it's, it's embarrassing. There's pastors that are still wearing diapers in the spirit. There's, there's men of God, apostles, that are still wearing diapers, making them tooth in their pants. And we need to begin to see the stuff. We need to grow. We need to step out of our old traditional ways or old perceptions of, of what it should be, Father, and step into the Word and the life that the Word gives. Lord, I love your bride and I love your people and I love the church. I love the ecclesia. But Lord, I pray that we will begin to wake up and begin to run into the fullness of what you have for us. Yeah. Begin to see more than what, what is shown. To go deeper, like you said, you, you know, your disciples look at the harvest and they say, well, four more months. You look at the same harvest and say, it's ready. Yeah. Because you see and look with different eyes. You look at your people and you say, wow, look at you. And we look at ourselves and we go, wow. Yeah. Father, I pray that we will look at it through your eyes. That you will open us up and, and let that division take place, take place where my spirit can be in charge. My soul can be submissive to my spirit and my, my, my body can be submissive under my spirit, Father. So that my spirit man can rule from the inside of me in Christ. And I can become that spirit being that I'm meant to be where my, my, my soul and my spirit lives on the inside. My soul and my body lives on the inside of my spirit. And my spirit lives on the inside of Christ. Is Christ lives on the inside of the Father. Father, we love you. We praise you. I speak blessing over everyone. I increase favor. The people will start learning how to love you more. Just like you're teaching me how to love you more. Father, we love you. We praise you. Thank you for who you are, Lord. In the name of Yeshua. Amen.